what's up you guys it's your boy sample food by ty and today i'm going to be showing you guys how to make some swedish meatballs so what you're going to need is some ground beef ground pork some breadcrumbs some cumin some parmesan cheese onions some spices let's just jump right into making these because they're absolutely everything okay so what we're gonna work on right now is adding in the ground beef and the ground pork. Now I'm using grass-fed beef, which is going to make a big difference when it comes to the moisture and the texture of these meatballs. I'm also adding in two large eggs as well as one large cup of plain breadcrumbs. You can use fresh breadcrumbs, that's completely fine. I'm also going to be adding in some Worcestershire sauce, roughly about one and a half to two tablespoons worth. Then we're gonna start adding in the spices that make these what they truly are, which is a half a teaspoon of allspice, a half a teaspoon of uh, cumin, and then we're also gonna add in a half a teaspoon of black pepper and a tablespoon of kosher salt. Now, as always, I say this all the time. Y'all know I don't really mess with onions. That ain't no surprise. However, in this particular recipe and with the amount of meatballs we're making, we are going to go ahead and use this entire onion. Now, what I would suggest is I would go on ahead and mince these down as small as you possibly can. And of course, as always, I use sweet onions. You can use whatever type of onions you would prefer, but y'all know I kind of like the sweet onions. Um, so like I said, I'm going to use this entire onion and I'm going to mince it down as small as possible. Now, if you're going to use a food processor to do it, to help, you know, ease up some of the work, I would say be mindful to not release too much of the water. You don't want to completely emulsify it, but you do want it to be minced. So just keep an eye on it. Honestly, it's only one onion. So I would say just mince it by hand. Okay, so what we're gonna do now that we got the onions minced, you, you roughly should end up with about one cup's worth, okay? We're gonna add in about two tablespoons of vegetable oil in a really, really nice hot skillet. And we're also gonna add in about three tablespoons of butter. Now, like I said, the onions should have come up to about one cup's worth. That's really all you need. Um, you don't really need more than that, especially if you're not a big onion person, then I completely understand. Now, what we're gonna do right now is work on just trying to sweat these onions out. Um, you don't want to fry them, so definitely keep an eye on them, uh, especially temperature-wise and depending upon the type of pan that you're using. This is a stainless steel pan. You know, this is one that can go directly in the oven and you really have to keep an eye on these type of pans because sometimes they run hot and it also depends on the type of stove top that you're using, be it gas, electric, flat top, because, you know, these type of burners that you're looking at right now, I typically don't cook on. So sometimes they can make things very uneven because they're not necessarily always level. So one side of the pan can be hotter than the other. Now that these have kind of sweat out, what we're going to do is we're going to add these directly to the ground beef. Now, I know you guys are thinking I'm about to burn the living hell out of my hand, but don't worry. I am not. Everything's going to be a-okay. Because while we were cooking that, I put this entire bowl in the fridge so that the meat could get nice and cold. And now I'm just going to mix it for just a few few seconds with the spoon just to slightly drop the temperature of the onions and then of course I'm going to go in with my washed hands and we're going to go on ahead and mix this up. I'm also adding in about a half a cup of whole milk that is going to add even more moisture to these. Now I'm going to tell you the one thing about Swedish meatballs that I love the most is the fact that they kind of just melt in your mouth. Now as you can see this meat looks extremely soft dare I say even almost soggy looking in a sense. That's exactly what you want. If you try to start cooking these meatballs you know without any moisture in them and any breadcrumbs they're just going to come out hard as a brick and that is not what Swedish meatballs are all about now i will say if you find that it seems like yours is drying out a bit you can always add in a little bit of milk at a time so don't go crazy with it start with a half a cup and then if you need more then you can but be mindful you don't want it to be too loose or they won't form together, which is what we're about to do now. So I'm doing them in nice small bite sizes and I'm pretty much about to fill up this entire tray. So as you can see, I got quite a few meatballs out of this recipe. Now, if you want, you, what you can do is you can also freeze these so that you don't have to cook up the entire batch. That's completely up to you, you know, should you choose to do that. Now, what I'm about to do now is I'm just slightly searing these off, okay? We're not trying to fully cook these. We're just slightly searing them off. 
because we're going to fully cook these inside of the sauce, which we're gonna work on in a few moments. So for right now, I would say go on ahead and have your skillet on about a medium high and just let them sit on one side for roughly, I would say no more than a minute. You know what I mean? Depending upon how hot your pan is, I don't think they need to sit for more than a minute, to be honest with you. Because once again, you are not trying to fully cook these. This is just to get a beautiful brown sear on all of them. The other important thing is just to make sure that you're not overcrowding the pan because then they'll start to steam and you won't get all of this beautiful brownness that you see right here on the meatballs. It's really, really important. You want to have this slight sear because it's really gonna lock in all of the juices, which makes them so extremely tender. Now, now that we've browned them all off, we sat those meatballs to the side. We've just added in roughly, I would say about four tablespoons of butter. Now we're also gonna add in a half a cup of flour. We're doing equal parts here. Now I would say this is, if not the most important step, as always, y'all know I take it real seriously when we start to talk about a roux, honey. Now, what I'm doing right now is I am in the process of cooking out the flour. This is a very, very important step. One, because if you do not cook out the flour completely and you just immediately start to add the liquid to it, everything is gonna taste, it's gonna have a raw floury taste to it and you are not gonna be happy about it. So don't skip this step. It is also extremely important that you make sure that you are consistently stirring it. I would say use a wooden spoon or something that you don't mind scratching up your pan because all of that beautiful brown bits that you see that are stuck to the pan, that is seasoning up this flour right now. As you can see, I've not added any salt or pepper to this because you don't need it. All of the seasonings and the drippings that came from the, me browning off the meatballs, it's what's essentially is searing up the um, this flour right now, the beginning stages of our roux. Now, once again, you want to make sure that you are continuously stirring this. Don't get lazy because if you walk away, you will burn it and then sadly, you'll have to start all over again. The other thing you want to keep an eye on for is the color. For Swedish meatballs, you're going for a kind of a tan gravy. So this is roughly about the color that we want. So now we're good to start adding in our beef broth. Now, I will not give you guys an exact measurement on this because it's truly going to depend upon how much gravy you are making or how many meatballs. But what I can say is that once you start adding the liquid, always add a little bit at a time. There's never gonna be a set ingredient in my opinion because sometimes you just need more liquid than you do other times, you know what I mean? So now that that raw taste has really kind of cooked out, we're gonna start adding in the beef broth little by little. Now, what I will also say is to make sure that your skillet is not too, too high, because sometimes once you start adding in the liquid, it will immediately start to clump up. So in the beginning stages of making your roux, make sure your skillet, I would say, is maybe on about a three or four. So not quite medium high, but, but almost there. You definitely want it hot enough so that the flour can still be melting down, but that's the reason why it's important that you're adding in little by little amounts of whatever type of liquid you're choosing to use. Because what, what'll happen is if you add in all of the liquid at once, it'll completely clump up and turn into a big mess and then you'll never get it smooth. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be quiet and I'm gonna let y'all watch me get this gravy together and you will see how I will be continuously stirring this, adding it little by little, and you will also be able to see how the texture is going to slightly change and how it's going to thicken up. So sit on back on it, watch and learn some.
now what we're going to do is, now that the gravy has really nicely smoothed out, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start adding in all of those delicious meatballs back to our gravy. At this point, you wanna go on ahead and start bringing it almost up to a slight simmer. But remember, keep an eye on this because what you don't wanna happen is you don't want it to burn. Remember, the hotter the, the hotter this gravy gets, the thicker it's going to get, and then it's going to end up sticking. So really keep an eye on this. Don't let it. You see, As you can see, it is really, really thick right now. So once it comes up to that slight simmer, then you can start to kick the temperature back. Because at this point, we're going to go on ahead and cook off the meatballs. And honestly, it doesn't really take that long at all. So now what we're doing is we're adding in roughly, I would say, about three-fourths of a cup of some heavy cream and then we've also just added in some sour cream now you can use whatever type of sour cream you want but i added in one fourth of a cup now this is really going to add a lovely layer of creaminess to these meatballs which i'm uh, let me tell you something baby when i tell y'all these damn meatballs are so delicious now i would say once you've added in the cream once you've added in you know, the sour cream, you're pretty much at the end stage. Honestly, once you start adding in the meatballs, they really should only take roughly, I would say, no more than 10 to 15 minutes to cook in the gravy. I put some, um, I didn't cover it up or anything like that. I just let it be on, on a slight simmer and just let them cook. Once the meatballs are done cooking, that's when you should be adding in the cream and the sour cream. You do that at the very last second. Because at this point, these meatballs are completely cooked. Now, I'm going to be adding in some delicious egg noodles because I just absolutely love using egg noodles. And as you can see, I removed about half of the meatballs from the pan because I'm going to save that for a different time. Um, so I removed about half and I'm only going to use about half of my egg noodles but this is pretty much it you guys you know at this point i would say check it for salt and pepper if you think you need it you really shouldn't because the meatball should be well seasoned and also make sure that you're putting kosher salt or salt of some kind in the water when you're cooking your egg noodles that will make a huge huge difference i'm going to be adding in a nice little handful of some fresh ali uh, grated uh, parmesan cheese and then of course some parsley and just mix it up sit back and enjoy i mean you know it really is just that simple i know it might seem i know i always say like oh it's just so simple and i'm thinking these people are probably thinking that wasn't no damn simple recipe <laughs> to me honey this seems like really really easy but i'm telling you you can see the creaminess i mean it's just absolutely it, they're absolutely delicious and they're homemade it does not take long to cook at all now if you did not want to serve this with um noodles you can have this with mashed potatoes i know a lot of people eat it with cranberries on the side you know do what do whatever you want honey look if you are new to my channel welcome to simply food by ty if you're one of my returning subscribers well y'all babies know i love y'all so much and as always y'all babies stay cute and take care bye guys Kitchen. Simply Food by T.Y. We hope that you enjoyed it. Simply Food by T.Y. If you haven't took the time, make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Simply Food.